On this, the April 4th, 2024 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, we have an update in the Port of Baltimore. I'm your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to today's update. So yesterday, Governor Westmore held a press conference where he laid out the situation regarding the Port of Baltimore, the main channel, and the motor vessel Dolly. It appears that Governor Moore is materializing here as the de facto face of the situation in and around the Port of Baltimore. I have stated repeatedly that I think there needs to be a national incident commander named in the same uh, vein that Admiral uh, Thad Allen was for the Deepwater Horizon. I understand that there's a unified command authority. I have been getting many, many, many emails and uh, tweets and texts and everything saying that, Sal, the unified command is an incident command system. Got it. Understand. I understand ICS 300, 400. Got the planning P. I know how this works. Got it. What I am saying is that a maritime incident is unlike a hurricane or tornado and a lot of other incidents where unified command works. Uh, This is a very confined area that they're operating. There's a lot of divergent organizations, both local, state, and federal, including international here. You have a Singapore flagged vessel that is here. You have commercial firms. You have three different salvage operations going on concurrently at the same time. Uh, I just believe while many people know the unified command system and they can preaching to me all about ICS, I know maritime, I know maritime wrecks, I know maritime disasters. And believe me, you need a kind of clean chain of command when it comes to this. A national incident commander is probably appropriate at this point. Name who you want, but put someone in. And right now, de facto, it is Governor Wes Moore. All right, let's talk about what happened here yesterday. So the press conference was informative. I'll give this. Governor Moore knows how to speak. He knows how to run a press conference. And he had three principal uh people there who either spoke or were referred to in this meeting. And I want to identify them because I think it's really important to understand who is running what in this situation. So again, the best resource to go to right now for updates and information is right here to the Key Bridge Response 2024. They are releasing press releases fairly regularly. You'll see here, Press Release 7 just came out. A lot of these are just images that are coming out. Uh, I would argue they're not always the best. I think one of the important images is this, is weather. Uh, The weather storm that came in through the uh, East Coast, up to the mid-atlantic up to new england really put a hamper on operations fog poor weather reduced visibility and even a bit of a sea state was out there for a time baltimore chesapeake bay can get rough it can is one of the reasons why people love to go out sailing in this region so that is definitely going to be a, a issue when it comes to operations so one of the people who spoke uh right off the bat, was the commander of the 5th Coast Guard District. Uh, United States divides, uh, the Coast Guard divides the United States up into districts. And the 5th District, which is Mid-Atlantic, was Rear Admiral Shannon Gilreath. He gave uh, the principal talk on giving the overview and and listing the priorities of what needs to be done. I'm going to go over them in a minute. Who is missing from that is this person right here, Captain David O'Connell. David O'Connell is the captain of the port for Baltimore. He's actually the the commander of Sector Maryland National Capital Region. Uh, Dave O'Connell has been the captain there since the Ever Forward two years ago, so he's well-versed in this. I assume he wasn't there because he was busy running the operation. He is the federal uh, on-scene incident commander, so he is to represent the federal government in this. I do have a bit of a problem here in that a Coast Guard captain is fairly going to be junior when we start seeing some stars floating in and out here from the Navy, from the Coast Guard, from the Army, but Captain O'Connell is is well-versed, well-experienced in this. Uh, There's no doubt a very capable person. Then you have the colonel in charge of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the Baltimore area, and that's Colonel S.T. Pinchain. Uh, She gave a talk, and her talk was very uh, important, I would argue, in the press conference, because she's talking about the fact that what you see above the water is the easy part of this salvage, and that's not easy. Cutting that steel out of the girders off is, is, it is, you are misjudging the information when you watch that. They are much bigger than you think. Uh, it's much more in, involved. And that is the easier part because once you start going into the water, it becomes so much more difficult. And one of the big things is that large sections of the bridge have collapsed onto itself. What you have at the bottom of the main shipping channel 
is collapsed concrete and steel that is encumbering and reducing the maximum draft that you can go over that main shipping channel. That main shipping channel has got to get down to 50 feet. And the bridge is embedded in the mud. Part of it is below 50 feet, and a large chunk of it is above 50 feet. And this is not an easy operation by any means. And then the last person there was Paul Hankins. Uh, he did not speak at the conference, but he was there. He is the supervisor of salvage for the United States uh, Navy, director of salvage operations and ocean engineering. Vast experience. He actually was vice president for Don John Marine. Don John Marine is the, is the company that got the contract from the U.S. Navy to do the salvage in the main ship channel. There are three uh, salvage companies at work here. Resolve Marine is doing the ship salvage. They were contracted by the ship company and the insurance company. The U.S. Navy SoupSal did Don John. Now, Don John is one of the standing companies that have a, a contract with the U.S. Navy, so it's not unusual that Don John got the contract. And then the third is Scancia. Scancia was under contract to the Department of Transportation for the state of Maryland, and they're working on bridge sections that are not either on the ship or in the main channel. Those are really the three big uh, uh, people at play here, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, Coast Guard, and U.S. Navy uh, SoupSal. All right, this is imagery that came out from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Baltimore. They post this on their Twitter X page, uh, and I thought I'd give you the latest update. They've changed it around a little bit from where it was. So one of the big things they have here is they list objectives and priorities. We're going to go through each of them, and then they've color-coded what is in the process of working, what's, uh, what's ready, and what uh, needs, you know, needs to be started. So right off the bat, objective. So that's objective A, stabilize dolly to prevent pivoting. That's been done. The key thing is you don't want dolly moving. With the bridge broken and in half and laying across the bow and with sensor and divers in the water, you can't have the dolly moving. So it has to be stabilized. It's one of the reasons the ship's crew is still on board. They are on board to maintain the ship. They need to keep ship operations and ship systems running. Uh, there may be a need later on to use ship engines to kind of pull them off. There's a report that two forward compartments of the vessel are flooded probably the forepeak which is the bulbous bow area and I would imagine it, it would be the, the the bow thruster room which is the other one that's pretty far forward not sure if any of the cargo holes are flooded the ship is down and grounded at this moment uh, it's out of the main shipping channel uh, this ship probably is drawing somewhere in the range of 35 to 40 feet of water uh, I haven't been able to get a good draft on her where she's at plus we won't be able to tell from the markings because she is aground this was the problem we had with ever forward running aground two years years ago so you need to stabilize and we may need to see some dredging take place in and around the vessel when they eventually want to remove her the problem is there's four to five thousand tons of bridge lying across the bow what is about to happen is as soon as weather clears there are tugs and uh, there are barges and cranes alongside they're going to start removing containers forward to the main house so if you look on this image or image here You'll see that uh, where it says almost like where D is right there in that. You can see the bridge in the house. Uh, when I say bridge, I don't mean the, the, the key bridge. I mean the, the pilot house of the ship. From the pilot house forward, they're going to start removing containers off there. A lot of those containers will be empty because they're all the way up forward, but there will be some full containers, and this is where the hazardous material containers are all located on the ship. B, they got to analyze the internal bridge truss structure. So analyzing the bridge is an ongoing process. They don't do this once and stop. As they cut and move everything, they go back in and reanalyze. So this is an ongoing process. What is above the water is easy to identify. It's below water that's a problem. Now, they have 3D sensing equipment that's giving them those 3D pictures that you saw in some of the briefings. However, one of the things that they have is things move, things shift. Very poor visibility in the water. You're not seeing very far in front of you. I've done black water diving before. It's not fun. Uh, and you do have a bit of a knock current that goes through here that flips with the tide. Uh, C, position to 1,500 ton floating crane. So if you look at where C is above at the very top there, that is Chesapeake 1000 and Weeks 533 cranes. They're going to be put in place to help start removing some of the heavy material that's going to be eventually removed off the forward part of the vessel. This is removing the bridge structure. You can't just put the ship in reverse, back down, and yank the bridge with you. You're going to destroy the bow of the ship, cause more damage, and potentially sink the ship. So you've got to be careful about it. You don't want to break the bow off the vessel. 
Uh, D, you got to move the wreckage from the dolly. This is, again, that lo long part process that works in. There's still material, and they want to get those containers off to free up the working area there, too, so they can get under the bridge, do some lifting as they cut material. And then the last two sections there, E and F, which is not done yet and hasn't even begun, is to refloat dolly away from the wreckage and then begin the disassembly of the bridge. And getting to E is going to be a bit. Getting to F is even tougher. So when you look at the priorities, they identified three priorities when Admiral Gilbert was up there. He gave three priorities. Number one is to clear the federal channel. And that means to establish a limited access channel. They've established two channels, one to the north, one to the south of the main shipping channel. They are an 11-foot channel to the north and a 14-foot channel to the south. Understand, they haven't dredged anything. All they've done is gone out, put marker buoys in, and have identified a, a channel that has that minimum draft. That is good for tugs and barges. 11 feet is tough for tugs and barges. That's not a lot of draft, I can say that. And even 14 feet isn't great. Uh, you're not moving any ships right now in and out of Baltimore, even with those auxiliary channels. Uh, I looked at this yesterday in my video when we talked about the uh, uh, choke points and looking at the port of Baltimore. You've got to establish a wreckage consolidation point. As you cut and remove wreckage, you've got to put it on barges and take it somewhere. That's going to be going to Sparrows Point. That would be off on the upper left side, uh, upper left corner of that picture right there. Fortunately, it's close by. So they'll be able to do it. They need the position cranes to remove the bridge span from Dolly, that is C, remove the wreckage, and then remove the wreckage from the Federal Channel. Second is refloat and remove Dolly. You've got to access the containers and remove containers. You've got to stage assets for repositioning of Dolly. Where are you going to bring Dolly? Once you get Dolly free, you've got to move it somewhere. She's going to need to be surveyed by the NK Classification Society. You mean, may need to take all the containers off her, so you've got to get her over to the Seagirt or over to Dundalk to be able to do that. And then refloat and move Dolly from the hard grounding. What happened with Ever Given in the Suez, Ever Forward in Baltimore, is they gave class surveys, came in. In the case of Ever Forward, they basically identified a limited sailing ability for her. She went to two ports, offloaded all her containers in Europe, and then sailed for China to go get a dry dock. And that was with substantial bow damage. Uh, probably see the same thing here. I don't envision Dolly going into a U.S. dry dock unless there is severe critical damage that we're not seeing on her. And then finally, clear and removing wreckage. Systematically clear wreckage from outside of the Federal Channel, facilitated under the direction of Maryland Department of Emergency Services. This is going to be scancy in that group. But clearing the Federal Channel is going to be the longest laborious part of that, because even when you remove Dolly, that F right there, the bridge section between the twin pillars, is embedded in what is a molasses of mud. That has you can't just leave the bridge in there. You got to get it all up. You can't because if you leave it there, you can't dredge because the dredgers can't come in and hit steel and concrete. You're gonna have to get every last part of that bridge up and out of the water. Now you may be able to drag parts of this section out of the way to open maybe a narrow channel to get ships in, which would require the use of uh, uh, tugs to be used, but. That's going to be a process that they're going to have to determine as it comes. So there's a couple of issues that are at play here right now. Number one, bringing in more salvage and resources. Uh, you know, one of the big cranes that was used back down in Brunswick, Georgia, for the uh, salvage of Golden Ray was the VB-10,000. This is a 10,000-ton heavy lift crane, big, huge, yellow kind of arch with, with, with cranes that you can lift massive sections. Uh, there was an investigation into look at that. From what I understand, they, they, there's no movement yet to move that crane. Uh, I th believe it's still down in the Georgia area. Uh, it would have to be brought back into service, tested, make sure the crane, uh, the, the, the winches and the wires are all good to go. Uh, they could conceivably bring that up there for it. Uh, the Navy doesn't have a lot of assets to play here. U.S. Navy salvage uh, resources have been basically atrophied. There's only three salvage vessels, actually two salvage vessels and a fleet tug left in the U.S. Navy. They're all stationed overseas. The new class being built down in the Gulf region will not be ready in time. So you do not have really a lot of assets. What Navy Soup Salvage does, the supervisor of salvage does, is really contract with commercial firms for it. Groups like Don John, Smith, Resolve, a whole batch of companies that they do it with. And then there's the Army, which actually had a huge, massive watercraft fleet. Part of that water 
watercraft fleet is heading over to Gaza to create the pier. But one of the features that the Army had were these large BD cranes. But they have taken those out of service largely. There used to be a large 100-ton revolving floating crane right in this region. But the Army and, and Navy, too, has basically not devoted a lot of money and resources to the logistics and that unsexy thing of salvage. So what we're winding up with here is we have to depend on the commercial sector for doing this. And that's why I'm, I'm making the argument here about unified command. It really you need someone to be the director because we got a lot of pieces that are moving here. Right now, unified command seems to be working great. And I understand that it's worked great before in other incidences. But again, go back and look at Deepwater Horizon. And, and see what happened in that situation. Uh, there's a lot going on here in April of a presidential election year. And getting the Port of Baltimore open is a key priority right now. I hope this update provided you some good background information. Please stay tuned to what's going on with shipping as we'll do further updates as more information comes out. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment. Share it across social media. Give it a big thumbs up. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly yearly subscriber to the page. Until the next video, Sal, signing off.